Okay, I'm here this morning with uh, Scott Buzzenshot. Uh, he and his wife Carolyn farm at Tickera on the northern York Peninsula. Uh, it's very close to the coast. We can see the sea behind the camera there. Um, and as a result, over the years, there's been uh, the saline influence of the winds, uh, bringing salt onto the soils, and that's caused some issues with the way uh, Scott goes about growing his crops. So Scott, can you just describe the, the saline issue you've got here and, and sort of how much of a problem is it on your farm and how long has it been around? Yeah, well, uh, salt, salty areas have, uh, have always sort of been there over the years, but never, uh, they never really impacted a great deal of land until we had a series of dry spells or yep. dry years. Yes. And uh, they became worse over a period of three or four of those years, and um, I think the contributing factor was I was trying to clean up the rye grasses and that that were in these areas and yep. concentrating on growing things like le le legumes as lentils and peas and, uh, and then in the other years I was uh, cutting hay yes. uh, to try to get rid of the grasses and before I knew it the areas that were used to have salty dry grass and ice plant and it had nothing in them because yep. uh, I'd taken all this organic carbon away right. by growing yep. the legumes and the hay and, um, and that's when I figured out that perhaps it's organic carbon that's, that's, that's making these areas get bigger besides yep. the dry years and that's when we started experimenting with different types of organic carbon to replace. Yep. So you did a trial pretty, pretty early on in the inception of the NSS group. Can you just describe the, the treatments, I guess, that you put out then? Yes. Well, we, we, uh, we had, I had an area that had become completely bare and it was just starting to become a quite a concern. It was, uh, you know, out of, a, say, a 50-hectare uh, paddock, probably 10 hectares. Yep. It was becoming completely unproductive. And, yep. Um, so we had plenty of area to experiment with and we, we gridded it off. And I tried, uh, you know, I tried a few snake oils uh, yep. that the chemical blokes were pushing, and uh, then I tried biosolids and uh, chicken manure, and, uh, and we just thought we'll, we'll try because we noticed chaff coming out the back of the header. The, we were still getting a bit of growth in there when we yes. were coming out of a production Those area. Yep. And um, so we decided to uh, the neighbours and myself uh, got some uh, chaff because they, they were running chaff carts for the first yep. year, I think, at that stage. And we spread that over a gridded area, and uh, instantly that was the, the first initial result. Was definitely from the chaff. Yep. The others, chicken manure was probably the second best, and then biosolids and then the snake oils were yep. exactly what they yep. were supposed to be snake oils. Yep. <laughs> so. so the the instant uh, visual response there was uh, crop germinating early on in the yep. season, and not that only was, that was the first opening rain. Right. Well, uh, I think it was mainly because of the. The grass weed seeds, of yes. the, which I've been trying to get rid of, yeah. I replaced by putting chaff cart back there. But I just noticed we got growth straight away, yep. yeah, and uh, it held the moisture and yep. all that sort of stuff. And, and uh, the initial year we had we had crop there. Yep. And so four to five years down the track now, are there still uh, responses there that you can see uh, from that significant amount of chaff that you spread out? Well, we're not only getting the risk, we've not only bought those areas, the aim was to get them up, back up to the productive area of the paddock. Yep. Those areas now are the most productive yes. areas of yep. the paddock. I've, yep. got, um, I've got yield mapping going now and, and where we initial, we did more than one trial, we did several trials in different paddocks and I did a, quite a large scale one in another paddock uh, where I spent quite a bit of time out there on the front loader pushing chaff heaps yep. and old rolls and just any old hay we could get our hands on. Yep. And now that, uh, for example, we had four tonne average barley crop uh, this year Anna, and where we put the chaff it was closer to five tonne yes. and then where we left nothing it was down to about you know 1.5 to two tonne. Yeah okay so, there you go significant response back in so you're seeing improved germination from the the chaff being there early on in the season and that's got to do with the actual moisture retention I guess that insulating effect we just had uh, 60 odd mil of rain uh, in February here um, which is reasonably unusual but I guess that uh, that it, it's going to be kept there from that thatch and probably uh, an increase just in uh, beneficial microbes and the like like that just with a new organic carbon so absolutely win-win yeah. -win situation. Well it just seems to be a, a one a one a one hit fix too. Yep. Well, once, you, once you've done it seems like a lot of work when you're doing it and but there is machines out there now that you can put in something as simple as square barley yep. uh, and uh, it can chop it up and throw it out in 40 feet. Yep. Uh, and that is a very simple pro project to do, yep. and uh, and it's a once-off. Yep. Right? Once you seem to get that organic carbon there, it, it's the nature takes care of itself, and the microbes, like we mentioned, and all that just.
come yep. into the soil, the health of the soil becomes healthier, yep. retains more moisture and you grow a bigger crop which is more organic carbon in the next year. So excellent. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very uh, time consuming when you do it the first time, but that's it. Yep. Very good. Worthwhile project. I'm at the NSS trial site at Tikara, uh, where we've had a soil moisture probe site observing the effects of spreading chaff on some bare saline ground. Uh, this paired site's got one moisture probe uh, that had no chaff spread on it, so it was essentially bare ground, and the other site uh, alongside of it uh, had chaff spread around three years ago, and we've just been tracking and following the effects of the chaff, that insulation effect on retaining moisture in the profile, as well as the resulting crop growth. Down here at ground level, we can see the differences that the chaff has actually made. If we look down here, uh, this is some stubble from last year's crop growth. This essentially was where the bare ground was, um, and three years ago no chaff was spread on this patch here. Um, so there is certainly some crop growth that has occurred, but not that many seeds germinated. If we look over here, um, there's some area that was quite bare. There's straw here now because that's come from the out of the back of the harvester where the crop was harvested. And uh, our defining line is pretty well through here. Um, so chaff was not spread on the left hand side but was spread on the right. And if we look through here you can see there's a lot more stubble, a lot more seeds actually germinated uh, that were planted last year's crop. And the resulting uh, crop growth there has meant there's a lot more tillers and obviously yield increase was more significant than what we had in this site here. Now I'm at a site where we have a soak coming out the side of a sand hill uh, in the uh, northern York Peninsula area in South Australia. Uh, this region you can see here behind me um, probably has been exacerbated over the last uh, 10 years or so according to uh, local farmers. Um, it is a possibility that uh, more summer weed spraying has led to less weeds that extract that moisture out during the summer and so any rainfall events we do get during that period that uh, fall in these soils on top of the sand hills there move down the sand just can't hold that moisture and come out as these soaks you can see so very unproductive patch uh, in this situation uh, trees have actually been planted there because uh, I guess that acceptance that it's just never going to be that productive again uh, there is certainly some salt issues there, uh, but what we have here to try and ameliorate some of the soil around the outside is uh, some chaff. So this is off a chaff cart from the harvester and uh, contains a lot of weed seeds uh, as well as the husks from the wheat crop that was here. And this is going to be spread out over this region, um, not, not so much in the, uh, the worst affected area there, but on the outskirts here where that water does flow in the winter, um, just to try and uh, retain uh, some of the goodies in the soil here, uh, get some stubble cover ha cover happening uh, so the crop can actually germinate and grow uh, early on and uh, hopefully then yield, whereas if it uh, was left bare and exposed when it is planted, uh, the uh, uh, seed dries out rather rapidly, or the soil dries out and uh, seeds often don't germinate. So again, this uh, addition of the uh, this insulating, mul insulating mulch uh, is quite valuable in this situation here and essentially using a byproduct, uh, this chaff that comes out the back of the harvester, putting it into an area where it's going to have a, a higher rate of um, product, increase that rate of productivity here rather than being spread out in the remainder of the field, uh, which is quite a nutritious soil type.